Good evening. Welcome to our last class for this great Italian wine series. This event is part of the True Italian Taste Project, which is promoted and financed by the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, carried out by Asso Camera Estero in collaboration with the Italian Chambers of Commerce Abroad to strengthen and to protect the authentic Italian products. True Italian Taste is part of the Extraordinary Italian Taste Program. Guiding us through this class tonight will be Sandra Colosimo, a certified sommelier with the renowned Italian Association of Sommeliers. Sandra has brought her expertise to Cavinona, Terroni's exclusive wine agency, where she works as sales and marketing manager. Sandra will present two award-winning volcanic wines from the Edna Estates of Azienda Agricola Biondi and Azienda Agricola Graci. To do so, she's joined by our special guests tonight, the producers of the featured wines who are connected live with us from Italy. Thank you so much, Stephanie and Ciro Biondi and Alberto Gracci for joining us. Before we start, I would like to remind you to register for a special edition of Authentic Italian Table, Coffee and Dessert in collaboration with Italy Toronto taking place on September 23, during which our chef will guide you through the preparation of a semifreddo paired with a truly Italian espresso coffee. This fall, Eco Canada will also launch a new website, buonissimo.ca, completely dedicated to Italian food and wines, authentic and regional cuisine, stores and restaurants in Ontario, which carry and offer authentic Italian ingredients, imported and certified, we will have a blog, we will feature uh, recipes, interviews and videos, and we will cover relevant news, events and opportunities for an unforgettable culinary experience in Canada. So keep following us and consider becoming a member of Eco Canada. Join us for our upcoming events and take advantage of our business and hoteling services at our offices on College Street in Toronto. For any further information, contact us at trade at italchambers.ca. Now it is time for me to turn the spotlight to Anna Mamoliti of Cavinona, Terroni's exclusive wine agency, to say a few words and to let you know about Cavinona's special offer tonight. Anna, over to you. Grazie mille. Thank you, Tiziana, and thank you everyone for joining us this evening. On behalf of Tironi and Cavinona, it has been a pleasure and an honor to collaborate with Eco Canada and to be a part of the true Italian taste. This is now our fifth master class. Our philosophy at Tironi and at our wine agency Cavinona has always been to promote Italian culture, Italian values in our market and in our restaurants. Hence why importing wine and many food items from Italy is so important to us. It is about introducing and educating our customers on all the great products that Italy has to offer. Like Eco Canada, our commitment and our passion to promoting this philosophy is very much aligned. Tonight, we are showcasing two of our Etna wines uh, from our Cavinona portfolio. This evening is extra special as we are fortunate to have two of our wine producers joining us this evening, all the way from Sicily at the late hour of past midnight. Uh, both produce wines that uh, are amazing and that have been very much embraced in our restaurants and in the Ontario market. I would like to, before beginning, thank Corrado Paina, Executive Director, Tiziana Tedesco, Deputy Director, Astrid Durzo, Project Manager of Eco Canada, for your commitment to Italy and everything Italian, and for all your efforts in making this evening happen. So thank you. There is a, a very special discount. If anyone uh, would like to take advantage of that, we'll post it on the chat. It's Eco Etna. Um, and you can get uh, a discount on uh, the wines this evening. Um, if you do have any questions this evening, also jot them down in the group chat and we'll be happy to um, ask those for you uh, after each wine is tasted. So thank you, Stephanie Pollack and, and Ciro Biondi for joining us from the Biondi Winery. And thank you, Alberto Gracci from, Gracci, from the Gracci Estate. Both produce wines uh, from Mount Etna, and we are so happy to have you here this evening to talk a bit about your wines, the history of your winery and the territory. 
So without further ado, I uh, would like to bring them on the screen right now, along with my colleague, uh, Sandra Colosimo, our Cavinona Marketing and Sales Manager, who will be facilitating, and sommelier, sorry, I should say, and who will be facilitating this evening's masterclass. So welcome, um, Chido and Stephanie. Welcome, Alberto. Um, it's so nice to have you here this evening with us. It's going to be amazing. Hello, Chido, Stephanie, and Alberto. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, be with us for this special event. And um, uh, just, uh, I guess we'll get started. I'm just going to say a few words and have a brief introduction and not take up too much time so that we can pass on the stage to the producers. Um, I'm just very excited and thank you all for joining us. Uh, we've had a bit of a summer break and we've missed you. And uh, we have a few days left of summer, and so I'm excited to present this evening one of the hottest uh, wine producing uh, regions in Italy. Um, and as unquestionably, um, it has sparked much attention on the international wine scene. And it was only fitting and perfect to finish our, with our fifth class with some fireworks. Um, so we'll start with the presentation. And uh, we're off to Mount Etna um, and uh, the volcanic wine excellence. We're in Sicily, on the island of Sicily, and the majestic Mount Etna hovers um, over the city of Catania in the northeastern part of Sicily. Um, not many people know that it is the highest and largest active volcano in Europe and one of the world's biggest. It is really a natural scientific laboratory and has been studied in their records that go back uh, 2,700 years ago. Um, it is considered one of the oldest volcanoes in the world, um, growing for about 500 years. And the reason why it's defined as growing is because as the eruptions keep going over uh, thousands of years, the mountain gets higher and higher. It is over 3,300 meters in height um, and the base is about 45 kilometers just to give you in diameter to give you a perspective of just the um, enormous size of uh, this great volcano and certainly to no surprise it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So what a magical special place it is um, and then to think that um, it is a major wine producing area and certainly one of the most fascinating in the world. Um, we're looking at the uh, wine region here of Sicily, just to give you a quick uh, perspective uh, in terms of location. So as I said, we're on the um, Eastern part of Sicily um, where there's a bit where the uh, volcano um, is near the coast, very near, uh, you can actually see the Messina Strait um, and just very close to Calabria. Um, and uh, it's near the cities of Messina. And many of you perhaps know the famous uh, tourist spot of uh, Taormina. Um, the Etna Dock uh, Appellation starts from the north. So it's a half circle there, almost a sort of a half moon um, from the north of the volcano onto the east coast and down to the south. And so that gives you a perspective. Sicily, of course, is a major wine producing um, region of Italy. Um, and, and one of the leading areas is the Etna Dock. Of course, the DOC, um, we've mentioned this before, but just to say it again, it's a, um, or a denomination of origin or controlled origin. It's just a guarantee. There are regulations um, that are set by the appellations and so it just is basically a guarantee and a control that the regulations are followed as to sort of the the grapes the wines um the yields the the vineyards and um etc so that's just to give you an idea of where we're at okay the etna dock appellation uh interesting to note that it was the first doc in um in sicily um in 1968 um, the vineyard area is about 1,100 hectares, so not huge. Um, as you can imagine, you're on a volcano, um, so it's considered heroic uh, 
viticulture. Um, you're literally on the slopes of a volcano. Uh, very high up as you go up, there are terraced vineyards, um, which are made um, with some of the dried out stone lava. Um, and I'm sure um, uh, Cheeto and Stephanie can tell us about that. Um, and then the two key principle, the two main players of the Etna Doc wines are the Caricante for your white and your Nerello Mascalese uh, for the red. The, the breakdown roughly, it's about 55% red, 31% white, and then the rest is Rosato and Spumanti. Um, and then we have, there's about 133 Contrade. The, the very interesting, we'll talk about that, perhaps uh, we'll have our producers talk about the Contrade. Um, the, what's interesting, what I find interesting is that 25% of Sicily's population lives on the slopes of the Etna volcano. And um, it is a major source of income for agriculture, um, vi uh, viticulture and uh, tourism, of course. Okay, you can move to the, thank you. So extraordinary wines, they call it Unisola nell'isola. So it's an island on an island. Um, it's a very, uh, very unique and special place. What may, some of the key characteristics which our producers will talk about further in greater detail, but number one is the rich volcanic soils. Um, this is uh, volcanic soils and accumulation of thousands of years of of uh, lava and ash and sand that has built up. And so it's basically layers over layers. Um, you have very high altitude vineyards. Uh, most of the uh, vineyards in the Appalachian are from 400 to 1,000 meters above sea level and considered among the highest in Italy. A very special microclimate. Uh, this is very important because you're, think of a mountain, you're very high, it's a volcano. Um, but in the summertime, you have significant, we mentioned this before with other regions. So here it's going to be even more dramatic. You're going to have significant day-night temperature variations. And in the summer, it could be as much as 30 degrees from the uh, daytime temperature um, to the night temperature. This is a, a, a positive feature as it facilitates uh, great maturation and aids and, and, and also adds to the complexity of the wines um, and the aromas. So uh, needless to say, it is a very unique uh, terroir. Um, and what they'll talk about, I'm sure the producers, is what is so fascinating is that depending on also the lava flows over the years and how long and 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 the the geology it varies of course depending on whether you're on this north south east west and from a few kilometers each way and so also their altitudes and where their vineyards are and also the exposure uh, don't forget they also have the advantage of being close to the sea so they also have um the, a wonderful sea air coming but yet they could be quite continental in terms of the weather because um, they're uh, quite high up and depending on which part they're sitting on the on the um, on Mount Etna. So it's hard to believe that when you see pictures like this, uh, it's been very active, uh, which they'll mention, I'm sure. Um, I think this was in um, March, I think a few months ago. Um, and so it's uh, it's quite amazing to think that people go and produce wine there. and. We just, I'm so pleased to, we have some of the finest producers, two great producers that represent uh, Etna. Uh, we have Azienda Agricola Biondi, uh, Stephanie and Ciro Biondi um, on the southeast side of the volcano. And as well, we have Alberto Gracci from Azienda Agricola Gracci on the uh, famous north side of, uh, of Etna in um, Paso Pichado. So welcome. Welcome Chilo and Stephanie again. Hi. And, hi. Yeah, hi. Thank you very much to invite us in this uh, beautiful event. And uh, you, you said nearly everything. 
<laughs> are very they're struggling to find something that you didn't say. To oh, say, yeah, no. <laughs> this is great. And uh, uh, we just want to introduce uh, our winery. It's so the with the history, history of the, the Azienda Biondi, which is uh, uh, quite a few generations before us that started. And uh, the last who made a good wine was my grandfather, which he, we, with his uh, brother managed to win some awards, as you can see in the old labels in Paris, in Lyon, and uh, Casal Monferrat at the beginning of the uh, last century. And, uh, and then uh, we restart in 1999. Oh, when the, the DOC Cons uh, consortium was established, uh, we got, like a family, the registration number, number three. So we, we were the third to be re registered on the DOC consortium. Uh, and uh, we started, restarted in 1999. So we celebrate the 21st Twenty second harvest together, and which is a uh, very good things to do. And uh, uh, what else? What do you want to say? We can just say about about your father taking over as well, because when your grandfather, when your great uncle died. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, just to make sure, the, the there was a nearly forty years of gap because my dad didn't continue what his dad used to do. Uh, so, because he had to invest money after the World War II, where the all the rules had changed, and he thought it was not worth it to invest uh, money at uh, that time in this field. So, for 40 years, the, this beautiful vineyard was nearly abandoned. And then, 1999, I was lucky enough to meet this beautiful girl there, and we decided together to uh, restart. So at the beginning, it was the idea not to make it wine because we didn't have an idea how to make a good wine. Still, we are, we are struggling to do it, but I mean, then it was like a, a quite impossible. So the idea was to make a wine that we could sell a little bit more than my dad used to sell it, just to keep the land in order. And uh, so we managed to do this also. And a few years ago, I showed this video here to, to my dad and he said, oh, I wish I could show this to my dad. And I say, you see, I'm lucky than you because that's what I'm doing now to you. And we prepare this uh, land to be uh, passed to the next generation. And they and I hope they will uh, take care as we are doing and like uh, mm -hmm. all the family have did in the past. Mm -hmm. um, your, uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that you definitely organic practicing. So no herbicides, pesticides, a lot of great care in the yeah. vineyard and with very little intervention. Yeah, uh, once we had uh, uh, Giorgio Locatelli shooting a program of the BBC in the vineyard and he prepared something uh, like uh, very unusual. He, he prepared the uh, uh, vine leaves of butter, fried in butter, fried in butter, deep fried in butter. And he was amazed Look in the vineyard and see how many insects and butterflies they were flying in the vineyard. And he said, well, It's very rare to see this uh, in other places, in other uh, one in vineyards uh, around Italy, this uh, amount of uh, life in the vineyards. So, what we do is just keep the less chemical, nearly nothing. So, we have in, no insecticides. Yeah, no, 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 of course not this. But we don't have certification because I got like a, a phobic against the bureaucratic things. And mm -hmm. I don't have uh, uh, people and in the vineyard and film papers that just do my certification, as I said, are uh, all the insect and butterfly to live happily in the vineyard. So if you want to have the certification, come to the vineyard and check yourself what we are doing there. So you have three vineyards. Um, we yeah, and I know yeah. they're up. They're on old craters from 125 BC, if I remember correctly. One from 12,000 yeah. years ago. Yeah. So San Nicolo, San Nicolo uh, crater 
uh, its data, as you say, 12,000 years ago, where the other two will stay in the Contrada Ronzini, uh, uh -huh. two uh, twins of the raptor around 2,000 years ago. So 2,000 years ago, the youngest and the, the oldest 12,000 yes. years ago. Wow. And um, what can you say about the soil? Definitely, we know it's uh, uh, rich in um, in minerals. Um, but in terms of like, as it goes up, do you have more iron um, content? Com and, and sort of how does it affect the wines of Etna? Yeah, this, as you said, mentioned before, uh, uh, the, what is very important is the love of the, the, the vineyard. Because, for instance, the, as I say, San Nicolò vineyard, which is distant 300 meters from the other ones, produce a completely different wine just because of the, the eruption the 12,000 years ago brought different kind of mineral in the, in the lava flow. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I know I didn't check what kind of mineral we got in one vineyard and to the other one. Because also, even if I knew what different in minerals uh, in the vineyard will not change a thing. Right. Because the, the important thing is you see the difference. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we, when we decide to uh, make San Nicolo or as itself, uh, we were trying to do something to let the people more understand what Etna is. And it's already, uh, a big, a huge difference between the the south, southeast in this case, and then the, on the north side. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you order uh, at no wine at the restaurant, you have to be more precise. Uh, you have to see tonight I would like to drink a uh, uh, north side of Etna or more the, the south or southeast. Of Can Etna. you tell us briefly uh, some of the main um, differences? Uh, the the thing is when you, when you think north and uh, and south, uh, in your mind immediately it comes that on south you have a bigger wine due the the uh, the aspects more, uh, but I don't know why it's the opposite because on the on the southeast you got uh, more elegant wines in the sense the uh, light in color not big uh, body and uh, uh, well on the north side from what I, I know is it's, it's darker in the color more alcohol contents and uh, so it is the opposite of what you can think right and um, so you you're the grapes that you cultivate today we're, we're featuring your Utis uh, uh, Etna Bianco. It's an interesting name. Where I, maybe you want to mention that. It's uh, Utis, yeah. which means no one. Yeah, no, uh, no one's be, uh, because of the Odyssey and the, what's happened with the Ulysses and the cycle of Polyphemus. But not only that, because when we started, like I said, in 1999, uh, we had this legacy of my grandfather. But I didn't want to bring this... Uh, all the legacy in the in, in the label and start to say you know my wine is good because my granddad used to make a great wine i didn't know this so i really we didn't want to say uh, that we say we are nobody and let's see what we can do in uh, in in the time so now after 22 years i can say well i'm doing a wine like uh, my granddad used to do because uh, uh, it probably is as good as East uh, wine then. So now we are more uh, conf conf comfortable, yeah, confident to to see to say about the legacy of my grandfather. Ah, very nice. And um, in terms of very interesting, the the Calicante, which is basically very difficult to find anywhere else in the world, and home there on Etna. What can you tell us about uh, the Caricante grape and these uh, impeccable wines? Uh, okay, I, what I, I think is that uh, uh, on Etna, we produce these great wines because luckily we got very stupid, stupid grape varieties. 
when I say this, we got, sorry, sorry, we got very, very stupid great varieties. <laughs> you know I mean? I mean, because they are uh, great varieties that don't interfere with their own characteristic into the, uh, the as a friend to say that they were. And mm -hmm. I, I, I like to, to take these analogies with the Burgundy wines, like uh, yeah, when you go to Burgundy, you, you, you start to drink Chablis, Mogachet, Puy Fousset, and, uh, and Mogachet, whatever. And you mm -hmm. all drink so many different, completely different wines made with the same grape variety, which is Chardonnay. And for me, the Chardonnay is good only when it doesn't taste of Chardonnay. When it tastes of Chardonnay, it's a, a wine made in South America, or somewhere else in the world, but never tastes like a, a, a white burgundy uh, made of Chardonnay. It's the same with, with Etna, with this Caricante. If you plant Caricante elsewhere, no way you can make an Etna wine. So uh, Etna is something that nobody can reproduce elsewhere than Etna. Because the, 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 the grapes variety, of course, but the, the soil, the, uh, the microclimates, and of course, the people that make the wine make this uh, uh, Etna uh, wines special. Yeah, very interesting. So um, perhaps we can um, talk a little bit about the Utis 2018. Um, yeah. it, it, and basically, I think is it the grapes come from all three of your vineyards. Yeah, the, this uh, Utis white. Uh, it's made with the grapes from all the vineyard together. Sometimes we purchase some grapes for the neighbor, yeah. uh, uh, but not every year. And mm -hmm. it's what uh, you can imagine to find on Etna. So the the freshness of this wine, uh, the uh, the minerality, and it's nearly salty or in the mouth. Some. People say, ah, because you are close to the sea. Some people say because of the minerality on the soil. I don't know what it is, but the important thing is that it's there and you can uh, taste it. Uh, you, can, you certainly can taste the, uh, definitely the minerality. That's one of the yeah. main characteristics. And it, this one got a, a problem, which is uh, as soon as you open a bottle, it's you see, and it's finished because it's so gappable. It's and, uh, and, uh, and and it's, uh, another thing I I want to uh, tell the, the all of you because uh, the 1999, as I say, was the first year when we started. We started, and mm -hmm. so in 90, uh, 2019 is the 20th uh, anniversary of the name mm -hmm. Utis. And therefore, we each decide to change ah. the, the label and the bottles. Yeah. So this would be the new... Uh, oh, we've got a great preview happening. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. so you are the first one to see the new uh, label. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. Yeah. And clearly, that's for the Utis uh, Bianco and the Utis uh, Rosso. And Rosso. Yes, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, yeah. The vineyards is, uh, are from uh, about 600 to 700 uh, meters above yeah. sea level. Yeah, we are in the town of Tregastani. Which yeah. The vineyards are around 700 meters above sea level. Uh, yeah, we the pictures of the terraced vineyard so i guess you don't get much machines up there no it's uh it's not possible to have uh, uh this uh, support but uh, uh well i'm i'm dreaming and i think one day we will manage to have uh, get rid of uh uh, make, uh petrol engine in the vineyard mm -hmm. we can only use a solar engine uh, I think it will happen uh, shortly, but this will be a, a great not to hear this uh, noise first and on the pollution of uh, in the vineyards. But this will happen, I think, shortly. It has. It's just uh, 
It has a lively acidity. It's so clean and fresh um, and very elegant, uh, which is a characteristic of the... Um, and the Perry, uh, and and the the Perry yes. The Perry, you know, that I love to have this wine with uh, oyster. Nice. And I just put a little bit of the, the wine into the shell. Yeah. With the oyster, um, because you can find the, the, the salinity of the uh, the oyster water and the, the salinity of the of this, uh, what is white. So I bet then it would be easier to pair this with the uh, also the, the, the fried masculine. Yeah, the, 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 the fry the fry anchovies. Uh -huh. uh, oh, yeah. Which is a nice uh, regional regional plate. I did uh, miss to mention for those of you who bought the antipasto plate, uh, we also <laughs> have uh, we have prosciutto di Parma DOP, and we have the capocollo produced by uh, Spaccio, Teroni's uh, production oh. kitchen. We have then the cheese. Uh, uh -huh. um, we have um, Grana Padano. We have also uh, Pecorino Calabrese, just coming down to the south uh, to keep within the southern flavors and some, uh, the Caponata, which is fantastic with the eggplants and tomato and onions and pine nuts and some olives and the the um, the uh, taralli with fennel, just the fennel again to give the Sicilian uh, flavors, a touch of the Sicilian um, cuisine. So um, overall, in terms of the, this is a beautiful wine. Um, it's got a, a beautiful aroma of uh, fresh fruits and apricot and peaches and um, it's just a beautiful, well-balanced, harmonious uh, wine that um, is so easy to pair as well. And also the another thing about Etna uh, white wines is that wines they can age. They're what, sorry? So they can age. They can age, that's our point. Yeah, so oh. this, we are tasting the 18. Uh, yeah. And the, the 18 harvest uh, year was a very rainy year. So we had to harvest uh, before rain when arriving. No problem with the whites, but mm -hmm. with the rain, we had to uh, struggle a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but the result of this uh, uh, cold summer was mm -hmm. this more freshness in, in, into the wine. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm start to understand a little bit more every year. It will take a long time before we understand uh, enough mm -hmm. but uh, i understand that it, it's uh, it's easier to make a great wine out of a very bad vintage rather than a very good vintage because when it, it's like this summer this this service we are going to start what's the harvest and, looking like uh, it's, it looks great but there is nothing to select because all the grapes that look perfect so you harvest everything well, in the bad years, you are forced to select the, the, Very the, only, the, the, the only one that uh, survived, the only best grapes mm -hmm. that you got in Pina. So let's mm -hmm. see what will happen in uh, this 2021. Very good. And we look forward to trying the 2021. And um, that's great. Thank you for that. And if there are any questions. We do have one question. Um, and it was, I guess you mentioned um, Contrade. Can you explain the term uh, Contrade? Because I don't think many of our uh, listeners are familiar with that. Yeah, well, a few years ago, I think we were the, the only one, uh, the first one of the few uh, in Italy, that make, make this uh, uh, contra the, the so what we did we split all the, the for each town around the uh, Etna area in uh, uh, as I say contra the, with their names they were particularly famous in the past to produce uh, quality wine so in in all the town like in Tregastani, it been split in these different areas with the names, and in each uh, area got this uh, particular, uh, at the moment, names, but then we will have to go 
Father, on that on the label will be the, the name of the vineyard because the, that will be even more important uh, because Contrado, for instance, can uh, include an area with different lava flow mm. at the same time, the same Contrado, but if, with the vineyard you get only one lava flow and uh, then will be even more interesting to, interesting, yeah. to do. Yeah, I, I say the Onetna in more than enologists to make good wine, we need uh, geologists to know Geologist. more what we, do, <laughs> what we got underneath our feet. It's, 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 it's just amazing to think, uh, to see this active lava flow, unpredictable, um, and then I can't imagine what it's like to deal with the regular eruptions and the sand and the, um, you know. <laughs> It's just got to be a lot of extra work. And certainly there's a passion that drives you guys forward. And I just wanted to also mention that when, and we'll introduce Alberto, but um, uh, the Etna dock appellation um, wasn't really as well known just 15, 20 years ago. And so when these pioneers landed in the area, they certainly had a vision because it wasn't really on the uh, major wine producing. Even though there's historical mm -hmm. roots, uh, absolutely. Um, but um, I understand when you started, there was only like, what, seven or eight producers, or you were number three, I believe, or something? Yeah, yeah. it's my, my father in the 1968 got number three. Uh, he does. But when... when, uh, when uh, we restart on, on Etna, probably there were like five producers that you can uh, open up a bottle and finish up with. The rest not so much. Now we are one, 160 even more. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's certainly it taken quite a following, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a bit uh, tough because, for instance, going to Italy. We were presenting our Etna, and people were looking for Nero Daula. And they said, hey, have you got Nero Daula? No, what you got? Etna, what's that? And, exactly. and they were, they were <laughs> because they don't, they're not was, saying that anymore. People are looking to find even a small <laughs> stamp on that, on that volcano. <laughs> they're not <Yeah>. saying that. <laughs> we, have, we have been uh, working very, very well. And, uh, and, and I remember. It'd be very hard to get inside special market like uh, German markets because Germans be Germans. They mm -hmm. say hey, your wine is beautiful, but they doesn't taste like Sicilian exactly. They taste mm -hmm. like that, which is completely different. So we need for uh, uh, some journalists to write article and explain to the public that what we got on Etna is something special. It's yeah. not. So it could be compared to the others. Mm -hmm. One thing about Etna I want to say, and the, on Etna we are very special. And we are very special for one reason. We are a bunch of friends. And we are very united. And uh, every occasion we got to do things together and to prom promote this, uh, this area, uh, we are always there to help each other and uh, and do things together because we uh, we we understand that to uh, to uh, for a region to grow mm -hmm. need to be unified, yeah, not yeah. not created. And uh, and this is a great thing. And uh, in fact, I'm very happy to see Alberto, which is one of my good friends. There you go. And, <laughs> and all all the other wine producers, uh, there is no competition on it because our production is so limited. So there will be no say, oh, uh, there is uh, there is no place for my wine. There is place for all the wine we produce on Etna, and uh, we are doing a very good job in terms of quality. And, uh, Thank you. I see the results, and um, and it's quite a force. Certainly. Yeah. Congratulations it, it, to all of you, really. 
Um, Wonderful wine. If I can just say two words, um, you, you couldn't have said it better. Cheers. Um, I know we should move on because Alberto needs yes. some time. Um, and it, it's been just a pleasure to talk to both of you. Um, and, and you're absolutely right. Like even when I come to Vinitaly and, uh, you know, go to the Sicilian um, pavilion, it, there is a different feel in there. And um, especially the Etna producers there uh, and having visited um, and come to the Contrade um, in, in uh, Mount Etna, it's, it's, uh, it's a very different feel. So yeah, keep Keep doing what you're doing um, and uh, it's a wonderful wine. So thank you so much. And I think we should probably move ahead. You're so um, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Nice okay. to see you, bro. Well, we look forward to uh, people put it in the chat. We look forward to getting your comments um, on your uh, on the wine. Um, so thank you, Chiro and Stephanie from Azienda Agricola Biondi in Tricastagni. Okay, so Alberto, are you there? We're so sorry. Hello. Alberto, thank you. Thank you to Canada, Caminona, Terroni, and thank you to everyone that is here. Uh, thank us. you for uh, taking this time to be with us, and we hope and very I'm very happy to present my wine with my friend Ciro and Stephanie. They, they uh, make great wines. There you are. You guys are wonderful examples of um, the team uh, on the Etna. Uh, so. Um, just a brief uh, presentation. Alberto was born in Catania and uh, he was a uh, successful investment banker in Milan. Um, um, like Chiro, who's also a trained architect. So very interesting. We got the north and the south, different situations, but uh, very uh, similar um, similar backgrounds. Um, his grandfather passed away and he was very uh, close to your grandfather, I understand, and he owned some uh, vineyards on the inner part of Sicily, not on Etna. And you had the insight, <laughs> which you want to hear about, to um, sell that land and come back to Sicily. So forget the suit at the bank. I think that was the smartest and most intelligent move. And um, and uh, bought, you decided to sell the land and you purchased land on Etna in 2004, just a few years after, you know, um, Stephanie and Cheeto were there and, um, and built it up from there when I understand there's just really very few people there and you were able to buy some land that was available, which is not quite the issue, uh, the situation today. Um, so, uh, welcome again, Alberto. We're featuring your Graci at Naroso 2018, uh, made with 100% uh, Nerello Mascalese. So Thank tell you. us a little bit about you, Alberto, yes, of course. the Graci wine. Uh, you know, when I decided to come back to my roots uh, in, in, to Sicily, I um, was looking a place to make uh, great classical wines. Uh, for me, a great classical wine is a place where you can make uh, a wine with the deep complexity, but without any excess. I mean, uh, always elegant with uh, a beautiful, austere and delicate elegance, but with complexity and deepness. And so I thought that uh, Etna was a place that uh, could uh, uh, permit us to, to um, to make a wine like this. Um, of course, Etna is uh, a, a place uh, full of mystery because we were talking about uh, the active volcano, no? but what is an active volcano? Technically, an active volcano is a volcano that has had uh, an eruption in the last 10,000 years, 10,000 years. And we already had in the, in the first six months of the year, more than 50 eruptions. There we go. So it's the last very six active. Mm. And this uh, eruption, they are uh, generally with the phenomenon of uh, paroxysm. That means an explosion of uh, lapi lapilli, black ash, and uh, small bomb of lava, of stone. And uh, all these uh, um, um, Arch and, uh, and materials, they go on the top of the soil. So the soil is regenerated every year, every month. It's something that it doesn't happen in, 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 in other places in the world. So it means that this soil, they are full of energy. And that's why the wine, they're full of minerality, full of, full of vibrancy. 
and uh, unique of course and uh, i also decided to to come back to etna because uh, i thought that this great opportunity to express a great terroir was possible also because uh, there were two great vehicles of expression carricante and relo mascalese that are able to express this unique vibrancy and energy of the soil and then also because it is a place where it's possible to work in a, in a sustainable let's say natural but i would say human way because uh, in the past the, the viticulture what all, was always a viticulture about sensibility and without excess without chemical and this is possible of et on etna because etna is a, a complex ecosystem we have 1,300 hectares, something like that, of uh, vineyard in, uh, in the DOC, but we have 16,000 hectares of woods. We are inside a park, a protected park of 50,000 hectares. What a forest! Because, because viticulture is possible, uh, a beautiful and great viticulture is possible when you live in a beautiful and complex ecosystem. And uh, if you come to Etna, you can see that there is not only vineyard, like you can find in other parts of, of the world, in other wine zone, but you have uh, chestnut, you have uh, oaks, uh, olive trees, uh, apple, uh, wild herbs, uh, you have a great complexity. And if you have the trees, you have birds, and birds, they eat the parasites, and so you need to, to do less treatment. And the yeast, the insect that Chiro was talking about, the same, they do a natural competition to the to to other insect that can uh, damage the the, the, the the plant and the, and the, uh, and and grapes. So Etna is a unique place that permit to work in this way. In uh, let's say we can talk organic or natural or sustainable, but the majority of the producers they work like this. And then it's a place that is a place of great vocation for viticulture. In fact, the, in fact, all the vineyards that we have all around Etna they are not irrigated. It means that if, even if you 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 have a very hot vintage like we had this vintage, 2021 has been uh, very hot with peaks of uh, 40 degrees or more and dry but in a great place with a great vocation thanks to this soil they are that they are sandy they are oxygenated that they, they, they never put the vineyard in a stress uh, situation because it's a great place of great vocation it's possible to grow a vineyard also without irrigation and then Etna is unique because uh, it is a very unique weather. Now we have the sun. I, I like to joke to say the African sun. So the Mediterranean yes, sun. Very close to uh, to Africa. Very, and they're very close. From the vineyards, as we did with uh, Biondi, the volcano, you could see it smoking right from your um, uh, vineyard. For sure. Mm -hmm. And so we have this African light, Mediterranean, Sicilian light, and light is energy that permits to have a beautiful, complex ripness. Mm -hmm. you know, the weather of the mountain, the wind, the north wind of Tramontana, for example, in our side, in the, in the, in the Valle dell'Alcantara, in the north side, that yeah, yeah, nice. brings dry, cold air. And then we have these beautiful diversities between the Contrada that we were talking about, no? The you have the English Contrada. This is our, uh, let's say, uh, expression of crew. No? It's a, a plot that is historical, that was already called with this name since centuries, that generally already it was cultivated with vineyard, because today we have 1,300 hectares of vineyard, but in the past we had, we had something like 50 times the quantity of vineyard that we had. So Etna was a very important zone of the world mm -hmm. for, for wine. And a lot of wine uh, they used to sell um, in bulk to the port of Genova, from the port of Riposto to the port of Genova, and then from Genova mm -hmm. this wine was used to blend especially in difficult vintages, so where, where there were some problems like phylloxera with 
French wine or wine from the north of Italy? Yeah, the philosopher, the philosopher didn't really um, hit many, a lot. I mean, the vineyards resisted mainly because of the altitudes and the soil. The, the altitude and also the, the sandy composition mm -hmm. the, and the also presence of silicon that mm -hmm. uh, is something that for phylloxera is a problem to resist mm -hmm. and to move. Mm -hmm. So all these aspects, they, they bring me to, to, to go to Etna uh, to, make, uh, to make wine. Mm -hmm. And uh, Graci Winery is a family winery it, the, I, I like to say that uh, uh, we are artisan, like uh, quite all the producers of Etna we are. And for me, artisan is uh, someone that takes part in person, the producer, in all the part of the process, of the process of making the product. So from the vineyard, so we only make wine from our vineyard and then in the winery, and then we speak about what, what, our wines. So in this case, when we put our hands, our nose in every part of the process, the process uh, will make a wine that will be our expression of mm -hmm. personality, mm -hmm. of interpretation of the terroir. And all the contrada that we have, so our different crew, they are very unique, everyone, because uh, we have, of course, the big diversity in altitude. We have vineyard between 2,000 and 3,000 feet above sea level. Some of these vineyards, they are among, among the, the highest vineyards in Europe. And then we have the variation of the exposition that Ciro was talking about. Um, uh, for example, in the, uh, in the Saudi side, there are these beautiful, delicate, transparent, elegant, fine wines. Mm -hmm. But in the Southwest, they are quite the opposite. No, in the uh, they are more dense, more round, uh, like in Bianca Villa, Santa Maria di Ligo. Yeah, I mean the red. And then in the north, they are wine that they are elegant wine, but also with uh, a, a deep complexity. So, oh, several different beautiful expression. Everyone is unique, is great, uh, and every expression is gorgeous but it's very interesting to have this expression. And yeah. then, of course, there is the difference that comes from the geological origin of the soil, because we have some vineyard, like some vineyard that we have in Passo Fisciaro, for example, that uh, are that they grown on soil that they, they are, were generated from a lava flow of 1,000 years ago. But if you go, for example, in the southwest, like in Bianca Villa, there are some vineyard that they are on soil of 50,000 years. Yeah, it's incredible. So 1,000 years and 50,000 years. Yeah. So you can imagine how the soil is more oxidated, mm -hmm. is more evoluted, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's more thin. And so it's incredible. And what we love about wine is mystery. And Etna is full of mystery. That's, That's why we, li we love Etna. Yeah. Yeah, you live with mystery every day there <laughs> under uh, Ida, right? You say Ida, her. Yes, yes, uh, Ida, yeah. because Etna for us is like uh, like a mother, no? The mother, the she, she, she is sometimes brilliant is, uh, for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we must respect and uh, it. Uh, she reminds us how small we are and how yeah, humble exactly. we are. She runs the show there, I understand. So, um... The uh, Nerello Mascalese, what can we, um, a little bit about the, the grape in terms of um, the pigment, the wine is a bit it's lighter and it's sort of an in-between perhaps between like a Pinot Noir and a Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo wine. Is I that think right? that Nerello is uh, in the, a lot of time uh, people, they do a comparison, no? like uh, other zone, other wine. I think to make a comparison is very difficult sometimes yeah, because of the right. diversities of the soil, of the place, everything. But I can say that they are in the same category mm -hmm. of elegant, vibrant wine. Mm -hmm. So like a, a, a beautiful Chianti Classico or a beautiful uh, Barbaresco mm -hmm. uh, or an elegant Barolo on the beautiful classic uh, uh, wine from Burgundy, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 
uh, Nerello Mascalese is an indigenous grape uh, and uh, it is a, a grape with a very long maturation cycle. Mm -hmm. So the maturation is very slow. Uh, this is very interesting because we arrive to a wine without, without any excess, again, because it's very slow in maturation, but also with a beautiful complexity. You know, mm -hmm. It's uh, something that uh, is for me the example of a classical wine. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we do is to try to work in a very classical wine to maintain this purity and this austere elegance. So we try to have the generosity through the cultivation with a very low yield yeah. and, uh, mature, and, and, uh, and to wait the right moment of maturation, mm -hmm. to have a full maturation for the mm -hmm. harvest. And then in the winery, we work with concrete tank and the big barrel. We do long maceration to have uh, yeah. an extraction of the beautiful right. noble tank that we months, have. 18 months, Alberto, in the large it barrel. Like, uh, 18 months, yes, the mm -hmm. majority in concrete. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then uh, we bottle a wine. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to maintain the purity and the great expression of Mediterranean. Mediterranean. Right. Uh, I think that the most uh, important wine, the most important thing for a wine is to be able to talk about the place from it come from. Absolutely. That's been my the biggest thing. I, absolutely. So, uh, you gotta go back to the land to understand, to fully appreciate what you what you have in the glass. And so we're, smelling, we're, we're smelling Etna tonight, which is so nice. <laughs> absolutely. And 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 the do is not to cover not the, not to cover this beautiful agroom and Mediterranean scrubs. Right. And that, it. right. It speaks about uh, Sicily, about uh, our place, about Etna, of course. And uh, Etna Rosso, like uh, Etna Bianco, that like Ciro was saying, is a wine that is beautiful, joyful when it's young, with all this uh, vibrant tannin, uh, with the salinity, beautiful for Pair, to pair with food, but mm -hmm. also it's a wine that has a, a very interesting evolution with time. If you drink, so now if you drink the wine, you have more the energy, no? It's like it's definitely energy, no? energetic and fresh and um, um, you get some fresh fruit as well and um, uh, red fruit, bit, uh, orange, uh, bloody orange. Uh, it's a little bit zesty. Um, yes. And also some good minerality there. Maybe perhaps a little bit of balsamic. Um, but with time, with time, as a beautiful evolution. With years, uh, in, also in the mouth, it become more smooth. With, the uh, tannin, the tannin yes. will smooth out even more with time. Absolutely. And this is very interesting for pairing with food because with, at the chiller temperature, it's possible also to pair with, with the, like a fish, for example, like I, li mm -hmm. I love to drink it and also with the grilled tuna, Fantastic. with olive oil and the mint leaf and the yeah. stuff. Yeah, because it has the complexity, um, but yet uh, the weight is uh, medium uh, weight and um, it's just very lively and fresh. And there's certainly, a, you know, some good uh, acidity there. Um, but it, it certainly pairs very nicely with uh, even pasta and fish and um, uh, perhaps even um, some like veal or, you know, light chicken. Um, so anything else you would like to, uh, any comments from the audience in terms of, there's also some Perhaps some sense of like a bit of a smokiness or a little bit of a tobacco. Sandra, we had a couple of comments um, about both of the wines from some of our, our guests, if I could just say. Um, one wrote, such passion and love for their art, truly inspiring. Oh, so that's... that was lovely. And um, uh, just gorgeous wines. Uh, you even had one guest who ha ha came to visit your winery, Alberto. So you brought back some memories for him. His name is Andrew. 
Um, so his message is very long, and if you have time, I'll read it later for you. But he was uh, okay, yeah. he's, he's really enjoying the wines, as many of our guests are this evening. There was one question of, uh, and maybe you mentioned this, and I may have missed it as well. But what kind of oak or wood uh, do you use for did you it, for this wine in particular? So for it, and also we make it a, a big part in concrete. Mm -hmm. And a small part, like 20, 25% in big oak. But there was a picture of this big. 4,000 liter, so quite, quite big. So we want to maintain this uh, classical style. Wonderful, thank you. And the classical would be certainly with the bigger barrels for people who are less familiar. Um, so it's the, the, the wood flavors are uh, less penetrated or less concentrated for sure. So you're getting the pure expression from the grapes and the terroir. Wonderful. We had one more question, which I found kind of interesting. Since Mount Etna is still active, how do you protect the vineyards from potential eruptions? They have. But you know, we are <laughs> fatalists because uh, the problem could Fearless. be to protect ourselves and not the vineyards. <laughs> <laughs> Because sometimes when we sleep, we, we listen, boom, like uh, a boom, no? And if you go out the window, you see the fire some kilometer far from, but you know, it's, uh, we are fatalists because uh, the, you know which one is the more risky thing that you can do is to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you live, you risk everything mm -hmm. you do, where, wherever you go, no? Mm -hmm. So Don't also, leave. <laughs> it's also risky. We can protect from a possible eruption. Uh, yeah. Fair. But we are very confident that uh, the, the eruption, uh, there will be, there, there will be only a positive communication without destroying our vineyard. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, any other questions, Anna? Or? No, I think that is it. Um, Sandra, do you want to do the final thank you and then I'll pass it over to Astrid? Absolutely. Um, thank you, Alberto Gracci, and thank you, Ciro and Stephanie Biondi, for a wonderful trip to Etna. And thank mm -hmm. you so much for making this um, last class of our series, which uh, we've had so much fun, but this has just been perfect. And, and also the extra stretch, the extra push to stay up all night. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. And um, it's been a wonderful evening. And um, thank you for transporting us uh, to Etna with your fabulous wines. And we welcome everyone to visit Etna. Uh, you fall in love at first sight. And um, thank you. And uh, Chin Chin. Chin Chin. And uh, thank you to everyone who's uh, followed on this series. Um, it's been a wonderful ride. It's been uh, a lot of fun. And just thank you so much for all the enthusiasm. Thank you. Thank you to thank you. all of you. There was indeed a lot of passion and love for winemaking in the presentations from uh, Alberto. Chiro and Stephanie, so thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was great to have you, all three of you here with us. Uh, thank you for staying up so late. And uh, it, was, it was really great. And it was a great way to conclude our Great Italian Wine Masterclass series. So thanks again, and we hope uh, to uh, see you in Sicily. We'll come and, uh, <laughs> we'll come and, uh, and visit you hopefully one day. We hope soon. Yeah. or maybe you can come and visit us but uh, <laughs> so thank you again and uh, thank you so much on behalf of uh, Eco Canada and our executive director Corrado Paida and all my colleagues Astrid, Mary, Laria, Monica and Richard uh, um, I would like to thank for all the great work behind the scenes but we all of us would like to thank Cavinona, uh, Anna Mamoliti, and uh, Sandra Colosimo for uh, this great series uh, of masterclasses, uh, great Italian wine. We had some great presentations, a lot of enthusiasm 
uh, from our followers and uh, from our audience. Uh, thank, you, thank you again to our wine producers tonight, Stephanie and Ciro Biondi and Alberto Graci um, for joining us live tonight. And uh, so I hope to see you all again soon. Tatiana, uh, thank yeah. you, Astrid, and the entire team for just being such a wonderful crew and just the professionalism and just the great people that you are. It's just been a wonderful synergy. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll do it again, I guess. I'll do it again for sure. Hopefully, yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you, Sandra. Thank you all. It was really fun. It was work and it was fun. So... Thank you. Wonderful. Thank Good night, everybody. You. Grazie mille a tutti. For the uh, final fireworks. Grazie. <laughs> Grazie a tutti. Buona serata. Buona 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 Bu